Hey, Jordy Skipper here, and once again, welcome to my adventures in aquascaping. Today's video, we'll talk about the flex, the Fluval flex. Well, not so much about the flex, but what's inside. We're going to talk about this aquascape, um, who inspired us to do this aquascape, and how I've done it. I'll do a little step by step how I created this. One day I was going through ADA, which is Aqua Design and Mono. They've got a brilliant website, the godfather of aquascaping, who is the late, great Takashi Amano. I was flicking through some of the videos on the channel. I come across this aquascape, which was done by Daishi Araki. I think it is Daishi Araki, excuse the pronunciation, who is, he's one of my favorite aquascapers at the moment. And he had created this aquascape using Dragonstone. And I thought, hmm, I'm gonna give that a go. So I did. He's a great aquascaper. I think he's the youngest within ADA and his aquascapes are amazing. And like I say, he's one of my favorites at the moment. So after seeing that, the plan had to go. So in my head, I knew exactly what I wanted. I had this tank empty, or had just emptied at the time. And I thought, right, that's a skate I'm gonna go for. So I got all my materials and got stuck in. So in this video, I'll take you through what I've done step by step. We'll get straight in and we'll talk about, first up, the substrate. The substrate is ADA Colorado sand. And what I've done first up, I just put a thin layer in, ready for the rocks to go in. The stone is Dragonstone, which got the stone and I started building with the stone. I bought tons of stone, a lot more than I needed. And I would highly advise you guys to do that as well. If you've got a hard scale plan, buy as much as you can afford. That way, you can be more creative and you've got some more to play with. So buy more if you can, if you can afford it. I started leaving a stone using the largest pieces first and then bits that didn't fit too well or I had to change. I went outside, got the hammer, took the hammer to it, hammer and chisel and started chopping away. The good thing with this, it's clear based and it's easy to just thin out in a small, in a, sorry, thin slices type of thing. A bit like slate, what's slate and it's easier to stack. So I found that good for this particular aquascape. So you can see there, we've got that triangular composition. That's exactly what I was after. Once I had finished it, well, not so much finished, but I got the shape I was after. There was a gap in the sides there so again, with smaller pieces, thinner pieces, I started closing that gap, knowing I could squeeze some plants in between when I was finished. By doing that, by accident, I created this awesome reflection. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the reflection, the other side of the rock, it looks brilliant and it makes the actual scape look a lot bigger than what it was. So scale wise, it's got a really good sense of scale and depth. That was also created by when I was laying the stone on top of each other, I was deliberately trying to create like some shades, areas of shadow, that sort of thing. Um, because that's always good for details in creating a sense of depth type of thing. So you've got the little crevices, you've got little overhangs. There's also like a small cave there. So all that was created. Once the stone was complete, I uh, added some finishing touches of gravel. This gravel is by a company called Prodibio, comes in little small tubs and it's just like a natural gravel. So I sprinkled some over the gravel, which it's got a good gradient from the stone to the gravel to the sand. And I think the colors go quite good and it, it really does give that natural appearance. After the stone substrate and the gravel was complete, what I wanted was, if you could imagine a tree above the water line and then you've got the roots coming through the stone, winding around the stone, that sort of thing. There's two ways you can do that. You can either just get some red moir root you might already have or buy it big and just snap bits off. This I actually had in packets. Um, I, got it, ooh, I got it months ago from a store called Aquarium Gardens. I bought that so I used that. It's perfect for this scape. So bits actually wedged in, or the bits that couldn't, to avoid it from floating once we put water in, I used small amounts of super glue. 
And during this process, I found a little tip which you might want to use. Because the stone is clay based, it goes, it crumbles down in a, like a dust, very dusty and claggy, like dust. <laughs> so little crumbly bits you can use for the glue. So once the glue is on, there is a, you can use super glue in these setups, but the downside is you've got to be careful where you use it. It can't be hidden. It's horrible. It leaves, it dries white under water and it looks horrible, really unnatural. So a little tip I got, the crumbly bits, this is the, it's the most descriptive way I can think of, the crumbly bits of the dragonstone, I just sprinkled that over and that blended the stone in into the wood and hides that white glue. So a little tip for you there. I know some aquascapers actually use soil, the sprinkle bits of soil on, but I found this way better for this particular setup. So once I've got the wood in, I try to get a good balance so there wasn't too much going on, but there was enough to create the effect, like creeping around the stone onto the sand. I think it looks quite prehistoric, Jurassic looking. Um, and it's, I'm really pleased with how the hardscape turned out. So hardscape done, we've got the substrate, the gravel, the finishing touches. We've got the branch wood or red moor root um, twigs, if you want to call them, and the dragon stone. Now it was time to plant. So I knew exactly what plants I wanted to use from the off. It was all Epiphy plants. If you don't know what Epiphy plants are, basically to plant plants that attach to wood or stone. You can do this by squeezing it in little crevices, which is my preferred method. Just squeeze it in there where you can. Uh, you can glue it. Um, little specks of glue, you can actually glue the Epiphy plants onto the wood or the stone. Uh, another commonly used method is tying it, which is a bit fiddly, but it is a good way of doing it. Probably the best way if you can't squeeze in any crevices is just get some thread, thread cotton, and just thread it onto where you want. That'll dissolve over time, so it doesn't really matter. It's all natural materials, so that's that's why a lot of people prefer to use it, natural materials, instead of using glue. And glue can be quite messy, you've got to watch with your fingers, so be careful with the glue. But if you do, that little sprinkly method works a treat. We have two types of plants in here, which is Busa and I'll never ever be able to say that, and it really annoys us. <laughs> You'll find us always use the nickname Buse. So there's two types of Buse in here. We have SP Red and we have Wavy Green. So SP Red's got that dark green leaf and the Wavy Green, self-explanatory, it's got the Wavy Green lighter leaf. So that's the two different types of Buse. <laughs> Buse. And we have Trident Fern, which is becoming my favorite plant. I love it. Um, you've got Narrowly Fern, you've got the regular Java Fern. This is trident fern, which kind of branches off into a trident. That's why trident fern, lovely plant. And uh, it's a really good focal plant as well. Three pieces there, wedged in the stone. Try to put it randomly so it wasn't too uniformed. You've always got to try and avoid that uniformed look when you're doing an aquascape. You want it to look as natural as possible. So hopefully you've achieved that. Moving forward with this tank, I will be doing Two weekly water changes of around 50-60%. The reason behind that is because it's not so heavily planted and to avoid any algae issues, it's always good to plant heavy. And because this isn't the case with this particular setup, I'll go with two water changes a week, 50-60%, and hopefully that'll help keep the algae at bay. I'll also introduce some algae-eating livestock which will probably be a mono shrimp, maybe some cherry shrimp, and neorite snails, which are good at keeping the rocks clean in particular. So I'll add those in a couple of weeks once the filter has matured. Lighting wise, I have it set at the moment on a digital timer for seven hours a day, and we'll see how that goes, because it is getting a lot of natural light with this big window, so I'll keep an eye on that, maybe just reduce it to six hours. I would never go more than eight hours of lighting because that is really going to promote algae growth, which is the last thing you want. So keep your lighting hours down. No more than eight hours, I would say. That's, that's the main advice I would give with lighting. 
Lighting isn't too powerful with this. It's 11 watts, so it's good. It's going to help these plants grow. With the Fluvel Flex, you can add a bit red, green, blue if you want to as well, but it's always best to have it set at the high white light. You want as much wattage as you can. I wouldn't reduce the white light. Maybe didn't use a bit of colour to help make the colours of the fish pop. On the fish, I know exactly what fish I'm going to put in here now, um, but I would like to know what you would put in. So if you leave a comment, let me know what fish you would put in this tank. See if you've got the same thoughts as me. But I'm pretty much set. I know what I'm going to put in, so they'll be going in around two, three weeks, maybe. I'll get in crew first, and then we'll introduce the fish, which I'm excited to get because it's a fish I've never kept before, and I think it'll suit this scape well. Liquid ferts, I'll be dosing lean with this tank and because I'm doing two water changes a week of 56% like I said earlier, I'll be lean dosing and just add the liquid fertilizer after each water change. Liquid fertilizer in this particular case is Evolution Aqua, Aquascape are complete. And I'm not gonna follow the instructions on the bottle because like I said, lean dosing because there's not a big plant biomass so i'm gonna to have to be careful with algae so i'm just take it as a go i might add more fertilizer at a, at a later date once the plants take a bit more just see how it goes early stages i'm always weary of algae and algae is the number one horrible nasty thing what we'll put people off in this this hobby algae kind of stand it try not to stress about it and the best way is prevention so the all you can't prevent algae exactly like water changes not too much lighting not overstocking, all those sorts of things. I'll speak a little about the Flex. This is the Fluva Flex, which is 57 litres, this particular model. That is 15 US gallons. It has an inbuilt filter. The space for a heater, which you don't get, you do have to buy your own heater. I do have a heater in here because the fish I'm going to introduce are tropical fish. So like a bit warmer temperatures. And that's pretty much it. It's got the curved design. Um, I do like it, but I prefer, I'm old fashioned. I like the, the, the standard square look, but it is a great tank, especially for the price. Easy to maintain, which is what I like about it. Takes minutes to maintain. I've got some maintenance videos up. If you want to check any other videos out, there is a maintenance video there. I'll probably do more in the future. So that's pretty much it, the Fruvel Flex. We've talked all about the scape. So if you let us know in the comments below, what do you think? Do you like this sort of scape? Just let us know in the comments. Please leave a like if you like what you see. And if you've got any questions regarding the scape, something I haven't covered, feel free to ask. I always answer the questions in the comments, guys. So feel free to ask any questions you want. I'll do my best to answer those. Okay, everyone. So that's pretty much covered everything about this scape. If you haven't subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, that way you'll not miss a thing. And please do consider subscribing because I really, really want to hit that 1,000 subscriber mark. I'm, I don't know, it's just a thing, a thousand sounds good. So I'm trying my best to get a thousand subscribers and hopefully you like the content I'm putting out. I'm doing my best to put out the best quality content as I can. Got loads of plans for the future, more tanks to come. I have got another two tanks if you have if you're new company channel i have got another two tanks which i'll be doing regular updates on so there'll be updates on this the fluvel flex there'll be updates on my kitchen tank which is a 30 centimeter cube there'll be updates on that tank and also i've got a larger tank my biggest tank in my living room which is a dual rio 240 which is fully planted there'll be regular updates on that tank as well and like i say more to come lots planned for the future lots planned for the channel but I know you do it with the help of you guys. So I really hope you're enjoying the content I'm putting out there. And I really do appreciate all the kind words, the kind comments, the kind messages I've had. It means means the world to us, really does. So for now, guys, till the next video, I shall see you later. Take care now. Bye-bye.